welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. That's not mice in the walls this time. It's next door moving their table around. Okay, I think they're done. Well, as you will have seen from the uh, thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description, this is a recreation, on the eyes at least, of my smoky grey New Year's Eve look that was requested to be filmed by quite a few people. And surprisingly enough, I filmed it with a purple palette. Unless I haven't used the purples yet. And regular viewers know how much purple is my one of my favourite shades. So, if you want to find out just exactly how I achieved this look, and with a purple palette, then my friend you're in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I will no doubt have told you in the intro that this is a requested look. Uh, it's a look that I wore actually for New Year's Eve. Um, I didn't film it. I was in way too much pain. So I just bunged a very simple smoky grey eye look on. Took a couple of photos, lobbed it up on um, Insta and stuff to wish people Happy New Year. And I had so many people ask me, you have to do a tutorial on that look. So this is that tutorial. Um, this, however, will remain a teaching channel, which means I go slowly. I can't go fast because of my pain anyway. So I go slowly enough that complete beginners who've never picked up a brush before can still follow my tutorials. So, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed, even though it's quite, it's early afternoon, it's about, what is it, just gone two o'clock. And by the time I go out tonight, the sun's probably going to have gone down, but it's just automatic to put SPF on anyway. This is my main primer that I use. It's actually an antiperspirant, facial antiperspirant, um, side effect of living with chronic pain, pain sweats. Side effect of fibro, inability to control your temperature, either freezing cold or boiling hot, there is no comfort zone. Side effect of the meds to control the pain and the fibro, facial sweating. Can you see why I need that antiperspirant now? Of course you can. Right, I'm going to get you zoomed in because I just want to talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids. A lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe they have hooded lids, follow the hooded lid guidelines and wonder why it's still not looking good on their eyes. So, let's get you zoomed in. Did you have a good Christmas and New Year? I hope you did. Ours was... Well, it was going. It was meant to have been quite restful. I stayed in Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and just had people round at mother-in-law's. And then Christmas Day, about twenty minutes before the brother-in-law was about to dish the meal up, Mum decides to cut her finger open on a, on a glass. So I guess who ended up up at A and E with the mother-in-law New Year's Day? That was fun. Anyway. Uh, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid. Admittedly, you can't see a lot. I'm particularly swollen today with my fibro. But you can still see all of my mobile lid, so I don't have hooded eyes. It's only if your upper lid completely covers this mobile lid right down to the lash line that you either have part or full hooded eyes or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Let me show you what deep set eyes are, which is what I've got. If I cover the mobile lid 
and close this eye. I've got as much space, if not more, that tucks back away that you can't see, back into the fold. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space above the crease there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm wearing glitters, even with a glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through there. So, how to put makeup on with either of those eye shapes? And I actually have a friend who has one hooded eye and one deep set eye, so she has to use both techniques. If you have a hooded eye, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid a new crease line. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary go right up to the brow with the colour. If however like me you have deep set eyes what we have to do is whatever the deepest colour is we're putting through the crease just relax our brows and make sure we've brought it up high enough that you can see it when our eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different eye shapes that suffer exactly the same issues. Hence people's confusion. Right. I'm still using these duo colour do 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 colour D O C O L O R that I got from AliExpress. They're clean, they're just stained. And this is a big round fluffy brush. And I am going to be using the Ace Beauty Paradise Fallen, which I picked up in the sale. And I'm quite happy about that, because I've been wanting this for quite a while. I picked this one up and I managed to get the Oceanic palette as well. Right, um, I'm going to be using Pure and stone and blackout and moon glow okay so i'm going to start off going into pure which is the lightest of the greys uh, it's got a bit of kick up in pan i'm just tapping back off onto the pan itself i don't know if you can see that there because all I'll do when I go back in for the next round is just pick up that loose powder on the top. I'm going to start off circular movements, holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on the eye as possible. And we do our usual circle towards the nose, bounce in the middle, reverse the direction to come back out again. Because I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. Uh, but I know 20 year olds who've always been stick thin that have looser eyelids just genetically. And by doing these little circular movements, you're very, very gently moving the skin around so you don't get any telltale white patches. Now, the exception to that rule is this side. This is the one I'm blinding. Can you see these super deep creases just here? Yeah, that's from when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old, so 40 years ago. And my eye remembers the damage, just like an elephant. Um, and I do have to stretch this lid out, otherwise I get white patching, no matter how well I do this. Um, and with the shimmer, I absolutely have to, otherwise the shimmer packs loosely into the, uh, the deep creasing, rather than being blended on, and ends up cascading down my face but I don't tend to pull it out until I put the very last deepest colour on that I'm going to go through the, the crease with. Now for those of you who are new as you can see I come in very very tightly I explain why I do things and I do them in real time. I don't speed things up. The only time you'll find me to speed something up is if I'm doing 
um, a film with a cut crease in it and I'll go through one of them slowly and then usually smooth the second one up otherwise the film ends up over an hour long and then people just don't want to watch films that long unfortunately despite the fact it does give you a better indication of how long it's going to take to actually do the makeup but yeah obviously if you're more expert and you can blend faster than me because you're not in chronic pain then you know feel free to speed me up there's a widget up there crack on sunshine I'm not going to be offended I don't even know unless you tell me and even if you do tell me I'm not going to be offended there's times that I've got so many films that I want to watch that I have to watch them at one and a half or double speed otherwise I'm never going to be able to watch them all right so you can see I've blended that from I tend to leave myself a three or four mil gap here just for my brow highlight if you've had to take it right up to your brow don't worry you can still pop a bit of highlight under the tail just to give you the lift at the end Right, I'm now going into the mid-toned grey, the one called Stoom. And I'm just going to do sort of like about halfway up with the shading. I still want that lighter grey to be at the top. So it's just... Think of it, if, if you've watched Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars as it is in America, Think of this as a Viennese waltz. So you've got natural turns, you've got a fleckle or a reverse turn, reverse step, and then a reverse turn to come back. And hopefully you can see these, these I really like how these are blending together. That's one thing you can say about Ace Beauty, they, they do have very good, very blendable shadows. Although, to be fair, I bought this for the purples. Ended up doing a smoky grey look for New Year because of what I was wearing. Still haven't used the purples yet. Oh, I'm just going to the bloody wrong shade. Right, clean that off on a clean washcloth. I'm meant to be going into stone. I went straight back into pure again, the first one. Such a numpty. I'm not worried about fallout. Um, I'm doing my base afterwards, I'm doing my foundation afterwards anyway. So same thing this side, just just keep blending. If you get a bit where I get dry patches here and here, where it's sort of clinging to it, if you just use the warmth of your finger you usually find it will blend it out a little bit easier but as you can see from the length of my nails I don't like using my fingers when it comes to applying eye makeup because I don't really want to poke my eye out which is something my husband nearly did on New Year got to mother-in-law's, got out of the car went dizzy, in pain, nearly passed out, he grabbed me but as he put his hand under my arm to grab me, he managed to poke me straight in the eye that I see with. So it's just as well we weren't going anywhere else that night, because I was not fit to drive. And then after a couple of gin and tonics, I was definitely in no state to drive. Right, so you can see I've just blended those together really softly. If you've got a bit of a harsher edge where the colours meet, dip back into the lighter one and just buff over the edge because then you're not buffing the lighter shade away but it just just allows you to blend it just that little bit easier as you can see right now I've got a clean washcloth here which is what I prefer to use for cleaning my brushes off with um, I used to use um, a colour switch but they are so harsh on your brushes especially natural hair brushes I mean these are synthetics obviously um, just don't use colour switches if you like your brushes 
just use a washcloth or microfiber cloth or an old tea towel, anything. Anything is better than those. Right, I'm now going to go in with another do colour one because it's bloody luminous, but it's more tightly packed. And I'm going to go into blackout. Now, if you've had to create a crease, you're going to be running this along that area. Okay? And you do the tiniest, tiniest little circles you can possibly do, barely moving the brush at all, to lay this colour down. And just double check you can say yes I have brought that up high enough that I can see it fabulous now the whole concept of putting the deepest color through the crease if you've had to create a new crease if you've got hooded lids and you've had to create a new crease further up on your lid lighter colors come forward darker colors go back Okay, that's why whenever you see a landscape painting, the trees furthest away are, are deeper green, the trees close up are a brighter green. So by putting a deeper colour through your crease or along your new crease, you are creating the illusion that that part of the eye is further back, that it's receded back, so it gives you the look of a crease, even if you've actually had to create one further up your lid. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this just on the outer edge there. Mm, nice. This is a very, very good black actually. I've not tried any. And the, the first Ace Beauty palette that I got was the Flare. Um, which I love. That's got sort of a bluey green row, a mauvey row, and like a warm tone orangey browny row. Um, and I really liked the formula of that. I was very tempted by the Oceanic palette early on in the year, but whenever I had the money to buy it, it was out of stock. And whenever it was in stock, I didn't have the money to buy it. Thankfully, Christmas, over Christmas and New Year, between the Christmas and New Year period, Beauty Bay have had some cracking sales on. And I managed to grab the Oceanic palette and this Paradise Fallen one, which, out of the four quads, this was the only one really that I wanted because of the purple. Um, the four quads, they're not quads, are they? It's the, the Paradise palettes that they did, the four pack. They did... Um, like a bright one, a pink one, a sort of warm toned browny orange one, and then this purple one. And out of all of them, the purple one really was the only one that I was interested in that I wanted. So, when I saw that was at a sensible price as well, I'm like, right, let's have some of that. I've actually been trying a new foundation. I need to get back into doing foundation reviews. Um, I'm doing them slightly differently because whereas before I was just giving you my first impression, I was sticking them on, wearing them for like 8 to 12 hours and giving you first impression of them. I've actually been wearing the foundations um, so I can give you a more rounded review so there's quite a few which are not necessarily new to the market but they're new to me um, there's I've got um, which ones have I got I've got the Rimmel Lasting Matte I have got K 
Covergirl Outlast Active. I've got the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. Part one here as well somewhere. I think it was the found the foundation found. What was it they called it? I can't remember now. And if I try and get it, everything's going to fall over on me, which will make me swear, which will annoy me because then I'll have to cut that out. Um, I've also picked up Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude, because I've used the Double Wear and love that, that's Double Wear Nude. Uh, my most recent ones though are Zoeva Authentic Skin and I've got the Pure 4-in-1 Selfie on the way as well. So, out of all of those, if you have a preference as to which ones you'd like to see first, just drop me a comment. in the comment section and whichever one gets the most votes will be the first one that I'll do for you right now I used to have that uh, makeup obsession um, spray that had the silver shimmer in it horrific absolutely horrific so I let the silver shimmer, the, 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 the sort of thick mica, it's like a thin glitter to be honest, settle at the bottom. And then, I, because this was empty, I filled this up with that spray. So this is what I'm going to use to wet my brush after I've put the pigment on. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I'm going to go in with this Morphe Jeffree Star JS24. It's a lip brush, but it's great for getting down into this inner corner. So I'm going to go into Moon Glow. Both sides. And then I'm going to spray it. Now, I always dry this ferrule. The easiest way to do that is put it in the crook of your knuckle and, sp oh pardon me, hiccups, spin it because you don't want moisture going down here and loosening the glue because then, then you won't have a brush anymore. Right, I'm actually going to look down into a little mirror here so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm still on camera for you. Now obviously by spraying a shimmer it does tend to increase the amount of shine and minimising the fallout. However, if someone says to you that this is foiling your shadow, they are wrong. I've even heard big beauty gurus refer to it as foiling the shadow and it's not. This is just applying the shadow wet and I'm just using the tip of the brush here just to blend where that shimmer and the matte meet on the edge there. To foil a shadow you have to have loose pigment so by scraping the top of the pigment off into a little dish or a, a little I use a little kid's um, watercolour pot actually. Just dried this off so I can go back into the pressed pigment. And then you mix it to a liquid or a paste. 
using either a mixing medium or setting spray or just good clean water and apply it as a liquid. That is falling your shadows. This is applying your shadows wet. I know this because I've done my research. And coincidentally, literally a week after I'd learned that, about 18 months ago, Wayne Goss actually said exactly the same thing in one of his films. And let's face it, what Wayne Goss doesn't know about makeup isn't really worth knowing at all, is it? Yeah, for some reason, it's gone on brighter one side than the other, so I'm just going to top this side back up again so we match there we go And again, just using the tip of the bristles, gently buff, just where it meets the black, just to soften that edge there. Mm. I like this. Right, I am going to pause you while I chuck some foundation on and some other base products, and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now for me my darlings I can't talk to you until the next time I press the record button. For you however there will be absolutely no delay. You will see me instantly. So hello. Hello I am back. My brows decided they were going to be a little bit wafty on me today so we have wafty brows. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to go in with this flat top brush into a blackout and just continue linking up with the edge there because my fibro has been making my eyes very very watery and they've always been very sensitive anyway um, to the point that I rarely if ever can put anything in my waterline uh, which is why I've always sort of on underneath the eye to line it. Um, normally I would put a big black wing on with this and folk lashes but as was the same issue that I had New Year's Eve I was running uh, and that was before hubby put his finger in it. So yeah. And then this brush is, is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped but it's chunky so it's really great for getting up under your lashes and sort of buffing them out. And I'm going to go in with um, Pure which is the lightest grey that we started with. And just use that to just gently buff along the lower lash line and just soften it out a little bit. Give it a little bit of smokiness. Not so much that we're about to go to a mosh pit, but uh, oh, I've been playing last resort so often. Got my life into pieces. This is my last resort. That's probably about as much as I can get away with doing without getting slapped with a copyright or uh, swearing. Actually, thinking about it. <clears throat> okay. Highlight time. And I actually picked up a new highlight. This is from eBay. It's by a company called Hojo. 
everything on the back is in Chinese, Cantonese, don't know. Apart from a variety of shining pearl powder can create a three-dimensional and advanced feeling, achieve the effect of light regulation and correct darkened matte skin. And uh, shade number three. But the reason that I picked this up is because when I open it, it will resemble not in uh, this particular colour, at least, but in the way the pan is designed. What does that make you think of? ABHM Reezy? Yeah. They do have one which is a dupe for the colour of ABHM Reezy, but um, I already have Jeffree Star's sarcophagus in a big pan, um, and that is a dupe for Amreezy. So I didn't need that, but I thought I'd grab a white one. Because I do like me a nice crisp white highlight. And the white highlights that I've been using the most are both quite pricey ones. It's Jeffrey's Ice Cold and Oh for a Nikki Tutorial Glazed Donut. But would you have a look at how bright this is? How gorgeous is this colour? I'm just going to bang a little bit on the in a corner there and as I always do bring it down under the tear duct and just blend it into the colour that I've got going under the eye there you can just leave it as the tear duct like that uh, but I, or the inner corner rather but I like to bring it along and just finish the eye shape off almost there right I am now going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to bung some more of this all over my face. Um, I'm going to put some mascara on, stick a lippy on, setting spray, do something with my hair, yada yada yada. Uh, regardless, when you come back, you'll see the finished look. So, see you right now again. Hello, I am back. Uh, obviously, I use the same highlight all over, and it's lovely. Uh, I used my Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Really like this, but it has got a huge brush. If you've got little eyes, you may struggle with that. The Lippy is one of the, the new Revolution range. Um, they're powder matte lipsticks reminds me very much of the NYX suede lipsticks but this is in shade Teddy it's a different lipstick to the one that I wore New Year New Year I wore the uh, the MAC Star Trek Klingaton because I wanted a more dramatic deeper lipstick look that day um, we're going out for a meal with friends later so I don't want anything too dramatic and as I'm planning on having steak uh, I don't want something that's going to end up all over my chin and I'm hoping that this will fade as gracefully as the NYX suede's do that's my plan so I've got a loose hair somewhere and it is tickling the heck out of my cheek um, the setting spray that I used today was my Gerard Slay All Day in Rose this is the one they did in combination with Nakia Joy. Now, if you don't like the scent of rose because it makes you think of old ladies, this is not that kind of smell. This smells like straight on Turkish Delight, which happens to be one of my favourite sweets. Uh, I don't have it often, usually just at Christmas, but uh, it does smell like Turkish Delight and it is kind of making me want to crave it right now. So. Obviously this was achieved with the uh, Paradise Fallen palette, but not a single purple touched my, my lids. So I am going to have to use this again and try the purples out. But as requested, this was the New Year's Eve look that I did quite literally three days ago, four days ago. What day is it? Yeah, four days ago. <laughs> Um, I hope you found this easy to follow, I hope you enjoyed this look, 
Um, if you're one of my regulars, please double check you're still subscribed because it seems like 2020 is going to continue the same trend as 2019 in that I put a film up, subscribers disappear. And they come back and say, I don't know what happened, I got unsubscribed. And I didn't want to be unsubscribed. So yeah, uh, please, please double check that you are still subscribed. Even if I'm still in your newsfeed, because there is a possibility that you've been taken off my numbers. If, however, this is your first time with me, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, I've got an awful lot of other films you can have a look through if you're not sure yet whether you want to subscribe. But if this film is enough for you to think, actually, do you know what? Oh, that slightly crackers, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird with a very soft voice uh, is actually quite listenable to and I learned a trick or two or even just enjoyed watching or listening then it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey. Uh, please, if you do that, do hit the bell, choose all notifications, I don't know how many hoops you have to jump through now in order to get uh, that run. You have to say, yes, I want them. Yes, I want all of them. Yes, I really, really want all of them because gone are the days you could just like a channel and their films would appear on your newsfeed. <laughs> anyway, that is quite enough for me for one day. Uh, so, regular viewers can say it with me. All that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.